وديلي سلامي يا رايا اهل الهرم وادعيلي وسلم لي على هذه الامم My name is uh, Amr Suleiman and I'll be your host for this evening. Now, as we all know, Hajj is the annual pilgrimage of Muslims to Islam's most sacred mosque in the city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia. Millions of Muslims from all nationalities around the world come together to perform the rituals and prayers in congregation dressed in simple white sheets called the Ihram. Now, this evening's program will include a short movie on the spectacular festival of Hajj, inspiring presentations on the life of Abraham and his noble wives, Sarah and Hajra, and delightful songs and slideshow by the famous Nasheed artist, Sham. And there'll also be opportunity afterwards during the Finger Buffet dinner to meet uh, local imams and other local residents to discuss the topic of Hajj, uh, Abraham and Islam, and a very colorful and excellent, I've had a quick look around, so I do uh, encourage you to look around an exhibition that we have just outside these double doors uh, whilst you're enjoying a delicious finger buffet dinner. I know I'll be looking forward to that personally. Now, we have a wonderful evening lined up with some great entertainment and speakers, and I don't want to get in the way of proceedings. So with that in mind, I'd like to introduce to the stage our project director for this evening, Brother Nadim Dar. Please welcome Brother Nadim. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك All praises belong to God and may his peace and blessings be upon his messengers the first of whom was Adam Adam peace be on him and the last of whom was Muhammad it really is wonderful uh, and a great uh, joy for me to see so many of uh, our guests here. Uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, organized, uh, like my brother said, uh, a very uh, beautiful spiritual uh, evening for you. Uh, as you can see, uh, Ihram uh, is, the ultimate, is the ultimate expression of one's complete and utter dependence of on God Almighty. And it also demonstrates that before the eyes of God, everyone is equal, uh, no, matter, no matter what race, uh, what culture, what nationality, uh, how much wealth you have, what class you are from. It doesn't matter before God. All that matters before God is what's in your heart and good righteous actions that you have performed in your life. Um, we're going to share with you the story of Prophet Abraham. Uh, Abraham's story is a, and, and, and the story of his uh, noble wife, Hajra, and their son, Ishmael, is really a story of uh, love, devotion, and deep trust on God Almighty, the Lord of the worlds. Uh, it is also really uh, a story uh, through which God uh, shows his love and his mercy uh, to his believing and obedient slaves. And he also demonstrates his ability to protect his, uh, his, his believing slaves and chosen people. And he also demonstrates uh, the truthfulness of his promises and shows also his power and his determination and might in executing those promises. Uh, you, you'll see all of that through, uh, through tonight's program, through the show movie we have. We have beautiful inspirational speeches uh, by, t by two young people here in the evening. Uh, and also we have got a beautiful set of songs that our uh, guest artist will, will perform. Now, um, the, the wisdom behind this evening uh, and, and the motivation uh, and, and the hope... Um, the world has grown very small. Uh, life is moving at a tremendous pace. And so many people uh, from so many different backgrounds, uh, faiths, cultures, uh, nationalities have, been, have come to live close together. Uh, and the natural uh, outcome of such a situation could be uh, many failures, mistrusts, fears. So um, we, we have been uh, contemplating uh, on, on, on a program uh, that we can organize where we can bring people together 
uh, and uh, uh, close to us. Uh, we feel that we have a duty towards our people, uh, everybody here, Muslims, non-Muslims. Uh, I, I see uh, uh, all the young people as my children, my sisters, my brothers. Uh, and, and I see myself as sometimes a fatherly figure, I, and I have a duty to protect uh, myself and uh, my family, which is all of you. Uh, so that, that, that was the motivation really behind this evening, and, and uh, uh, we really hope that, uh, uh, that uh, some uh, bridges will be built, uh, some people will, will make friendships, uh, will come closer to us. We'll, we will know many of you, and many of you will know us more closely. So th that's the that's the wisdom behind the evening. Uh, we have packed uh, a lot of uh, uh, good items, uh, in uh, interesting and entertaining items, in the program. So uh, I just inshallah uh, uh, ask you to relax, sit, and enjoy the evening, inshallah. Jazakallah, brother Nadim. Uh, fantastic words to set the scene for the evening. Um, I'd like to introduce um, Sham to the stage now. Sham, uh, I'm sure most of you know, one of the leading exponents of Nasheeds, singing in English, Arabic, and Urdu. And based in Birmingham, they are the UK's leading Nasheed group. Mercy like the angels in the rain. Mercy like the sun, the moon, the stars. Mercy like the angels in the rain. Mercy like the sun, the moon, the stars Blossoming flowers, bearing fruit Showing us the greatness of Allah Blossoming flowers, bearing fruit Showing us the greatness of Allah Can you feel the rain is falling down Falling down, falling down Mercy like the faith that shines within us Mercy like the prayers that Allah answers How it gives purpose to our lives Helping us strive for paradise How it gives purpose to our lives Helping us strive for paradise Paradise Mercy like the rain is falling down Mercy like the rain is falling down Can you feel the rain is falling down Falling down, falling down Mercy like the smile for one another Saban is currently a senior researcher for the Research Institute of Abrahamic Faiths specialising in the transmission and preservation of Hebrew and Aramaic biblical texts He teaches biblical history and participates in historical and theological discussions on various platforms. To speak about the life of Abraham, please welcome Soban Anwar. Uh, now, I want to discuss two aspects of Abraham's personality which make him unique, at least in my eyes. You see, for me, the intrinsic definition of remarkable has not changed in the last 4,000 years. What made Abraham remarkable is what makes any young person remarkable today. And what makes us remarkable is when we apply uh, our exclusive faculty to reason. To give you an important background, uh, Abraham lived in an intellectually oppressive uh, society where you did not question the status quo. Uh, you were risking your life, in fact, if you raised any objection uh, to the to the common practices of the people at that time. So what was the society of Ur like? So from a religious perspective, uh, they worshipped uh, the sun, the moon, bugs, sticks, stones, so anything you can imagine, they worshipped it. Um, but Abraham dares to reason with these people. Quran mentions a fascinating story about uh, Abraham where uh, he reasons with his people and uh, in my research this passage which I'm about to quote is also narrated by the first century Jewish historian uh, Flavius Josephus. Uh, uh, he in fact lived uh, towards the end of first century just after the, the time of Jesus of Nazareth. So what does Quran say? So Quran mentions a story where Abraham is uh, sitting in a gathering of his people and uh, it, it's uh, evening time, and he sees a star in the sky, and he, um, 
says to his people, look, that's my God. And you can imagine all the people saying, yeah, that's what we worship, that's our God. But after some time, when the, when the star disappears, Abraham says, um, this cannot be my God because uh, it has disappeared. And I don't like momentary or transitionary gods. And then you can imagine uh, what the state of uh, the conversation would have been like. And then the following night, Abraham sees the moon and he says, points at the moon and says, that's my God. And when uh, the, the moon disappears, uh, he says something which is very, very profound. He says, if my God does not guide me, I'll be one of the lost. I want to come back to this point, but carrying on with the story. So the following day, uh, he sees the sun and he says to people, hey, this must be my God because this is greater than the sun and the moon. And when the sun sets, he says, uh, I'm free from whatever you associate with God, Abraham, uh, speaking to uh, his people. Now, Quran uh, narrates an intriguing passage where Abraham is in a dialogue with his father. His father is obviously very hostile towards him, uh, but Abraham, on the other hand, remains uh, deeply respectful. Each time he addresses his father, he starts it with the words, Ya Abati, O my father. This denotes respect, humbleness, kindness. And when further on in the conversation, when his father becomes really aggressive and he tells Abraham that uh, you better leave before I stone you, meaning before I kill you, Abraham leaves with the words of peace. And one of the great examples that I could find was from the late 8th century uh, Muslim caliph Harun al-Rashid who ruled uh, from Baghdad, uh, country of Abraham. And he used to, in his court, he used to have a, a group of scholars uh, representing Christ, uh, Christianity, Judaism, uh, Hinduism, Atheism, uh, Buddhism. And, uh, and they used to hold regular discussions about uh, uh, each other's faith in a very respectful manner. Islam's monotheistic heritage stemming from Abraham has never been disputed. But at the same time, I do want to celebrate the honesty and uh, truthfulness of the uh, Orthodox Catholic Church in this regards. Uh, and uh, after this council, th there was uh, a statement uh, issued. And I want you to seriously consider this statement. So the church says that the plan of salvation also includes those who acknowledge the creator, amongst whom are in first place the Muslims. These profess to hold the faith of Abraham and together with us, they adore the one merciful God, judge of humankind on the last day. So this is coming from the Catholic church, the biggest church in Christendom. So when you talk about vast majority of Christians, the Catholic Church represents the vast majority of Christians. And I personally feel that this is a beautiful example of tolerance. We learn a lot from Abraham uh, as, as Muslims. Uh, we use to learn our mind, how to respect and tolerate, and how to live a wholesome life. So as Muslims, we try to emulate this great man by not following his teachings, but uh, also walking on his footsteps. And we do, we do this by taking a journey which he took across the desert plains 4,000 years ago to Makkah for Hajj. And by trying to worship God like he did, and by living life like he did for... Uh, to, to seek pleasure of God, we also try to become closer to God uh, by following the way of his friend, Abraham. Thank you. In the chapter of Abraham, Ibrahim, uh, chapter 14, verse 5, Allah says, In this are signs for all who certainly and constantly persevere and give thanks. Now, Sarah was incredibly beautiful. She was beautiful. You know when you see one of those people, sometimes we pass people on the street and you just automatically get drawn to that person. So it's happened maybe two or three times I've, I've, in my life. I've walked past somebody on the street and I've gone, wow, I, I, actually, I actually am drawn to you. I really love you. I don't even know you. They just have something about them, like a light in their face. And you can tell that that's just an amazing person. Sarah was one of those people. She had this beautiful light or noor in Arabic inside. 
and it shone in her outside beauty as well. Now, Bacchus, who was the, the king of Egypt at the time, was not a nice guy. He was arrogant. And he was one of these people who took whatever he wanted. So Sarah is taken and a room is prepared. So when the king approaches Sarah to touch her, suddenly his hand becomes paralyzed. He can't move. It goes numb. He gets scared. So the king learns that he is Ibrahim's wife and he actually gifts, gives a gift of a maid, and that is Hadja. Now, this is the key point of the story here, that these two wives had to separate and go to different areas of the region in order for these amazing nations to be born, to begin. So he takes Hadja and her son to Mecca, now, at that time, Mecca wasn't the thriving place that it is now. It was literally a valley between two hills in the area. And Ibrahim leaves Hajar and Ismail in a small valley with just some food and water, as much as they can carry, and he begins to walk away. Remember, this is a husband who has been kind and generous and loving towards his wives, towards his family. It must have been so difficult for him to do this. Hadja shouts after him, like anybody would. Where are you going? Why are you leaving us? He doesn't answer. He's obviously too upset to answer her. Then she thinks about things. She thinks about how God has helped the family out in the past. And she changes her question. Has God commanded you to do this? Yes, he replies. Then she says... God will not neglect us. And Hadja is alone with the child in this desert, in a burning desert, just a tree to shade her, and that's it. And be between the two hills, she begins to be proactive, and this is the key of being proactive. So she's trusting in God, but she's not just sitting. It's not just going to come. We have to act in order to get a result. So she runs to one of the hills called the Safa. That's the name of the hill. And then she runs across to Marwa. And she does this seven times between the two hills. Then she hears a strange voice. And she returns to the child. And she finds the angel Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, who strikes the ground with wings, and some of the narrations say his heel. And the well of Zemzem is born. Now, this well is an absolute miracle. And before I finish, I really do want to tell you about this well. The, the well of Zemzem, scientists have never, ever been able to find its source, even though they have tried. It has continued flowing and now feeds millions of people, including the inhabitants of Mecca and surrounding towns and also all the three million pilgrims. But it, it never even starts to dry up or run out. It has unique scientific properties um, healing properties, and it, 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 it's, it's literally a miracle. People can't work out what this is. It's, a, it's a unique. You can actually view YouTube it. There, there are some very interesting facts about Zemzem water. But these two amazing women are the mothers of two nations. Not only are they the mothers of two nations, they are also holding the keys to tranquility of our hearts and of our souls because of their patience because of their deep faith and because of their love of God. Okay, so uh, please welcome back to the stage, um, Sham, as you can see. So a round of applause for them, first of all, please. Thank you very much. And we're going to be uh, enjoying an extended set from them now. Dai, le usalim, le ala, le umam. 
انظر للكعبة يا محلاها نور وجلال يغشاها انظر للكعبة يا محلاها نور وجلال يغشاها يحرسها ربي ويرعاها واذكرني أمامها وادعيني 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 وديني سلامي يا رايح للحرم وادعيني وسلم على هذه الأمم ودي لي سلامي يا رايح للهرم ودعي لي وسلم لي على هذه الأمم انظر للكعبة يا محلاها نور وجلال يغشى انظر للكعبة يا محلاها نور وجلال يغشى يعرسها ربي ويرعاها واذكرني أمامها وادعي لي وادعي لي وادعي لي يا سعي بهمة من الصفا للمروة يا شانب من زمزم تذكرني بدعوة يا سعي بهمة من الصفا للمروة يا شارب من زمزم تذكرني بدعوة يا طالع على جبل الرحمة يا ماشي في وسط الزحمة يا طالع على جبل الرحمة يا ماشي في وسط الزحمة اطلب من مولاك الرحمة واذكرني أمامها وادعي لي وادعي لي اه وادعي لي ودي لي سلامي يا رايح للهرم وادعي لي وسلم لي على هذه الامم ودي لي سلامي يا رايح للهرم وادعي لي وسلم لي على هذه الامم انظر للكعبه يا محلاها نور وجلال يغشى انظر للكعبه يا محلاها نور وجلال السلام عليكم my name is Nadeem Dar uh, project director of this event. Uh, I have with me two of my dear friends, Subhan Anwar, Imran Beg. Uh, we're from Luton and we, we put this event together. Uh, and I'd like to ask uh, uh, my, my friends, uh, tell us a little bit about, little bit about this, uh, this event. Yeah, so, uh, so, so we're in that time of, type of, uh, time of year again. Um, so it's around Hajj and um, everyone from the Muslim and non-Muslim community are beginning to hear about Hajj. Um, being to see the pictures and articles etc. So we took this as an opportunity to showcase what Hajj is um, to everybody and um, uh, to give everyone a, an opportunity, a chance to ask questions, to get to know a bit more about Hajj beyond what they've seen in the articles, beyond what they've seen in um, uh, images and, uh, and short video clips on the, on the TV. So we wanted to relate that to the, to the, to the local community um, and, and bring that interaction um, uh, directly rather than um, just with the, 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 the adverse essential that we see. Well, um, Hajj is the most uh, publicized Muslim event in the wider media and uh, it was important for us to take this opportunity to let people know uh, how Abraham uh, salam, links uh, to Hajj and uh, how he is a very important personality in the history of Islam. Uh, so this event gave me a uh, personal opportunity to talk about Ibrahim and how uh, he is mentioned in the Quran uh, on numerous occasions and, and how his life uh, can teach us a, a lesson as, as, as Muslims and also uh, these lessons are, are not only limited to, to, to Muslims themselves but, but also uh, the people of other faiths can also benefit from it. One of the most important uh, um, objectives for me for this event was that uh, we wanted to uh, reach out to the wider community. They are our people, they are our brothers and sisters, our children, uh, Muslims, non-Muslims. So we wanted to reach out to the wider community. So uh, th that's why I designed this program with a lot of uh, entertainment, a lot of content, and uh, also uh, away from the mainstream Muslim areas. Uh, this is a beautiful library uh, we have in Luton. Uh, we have a beautiful theater, uh, a, a uh, an excellent team. Uh, I had really enjoyed, enjoyed every aspect of this project, um, working with so many people. Uh, so uh, it's been a really fulfilling uh, uh, experience for me, and hopefully uh, we will be designing more programs of this nature uh, and and uh, reaching out to 
uh, our, our, the wider community uh, in the UK, region, our people, inshallah. <laughs> Him